And in the meantime, we're just going to do a little soft shoe and some singing. Do you know any e-bike songs, Felicia? I do not know any e-bike songs. <laughs> Come on, Amazon, get it together. <laughs> flux capacitor problems. It's fluxing. Yeah, somebody. All right. Let's just go on the other channels and. Sorry, Amazon. I can't type here. The flux capacitor is fluxing. It almost looks like a dirty word. <sighs> da, 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 da. Nothing. Somebody said they waited four minutes, closed it, and then went back in right at the beginning. And one lady said she got it for 20 minutes. Oh. Really? All right, let's just go live then. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's just do this. I'm going to do it without the opening and everything. And uh, let's shut that down. And let's just go into it. We'll be on our other channels too. All right. Welcome, fellow humans. Apologize for the technical snafus. Am I in camera? I can't see. <laughs> My name is Fresh from Fresh and Felicia. And also, we're here on the family unit. We're on uh, LinkedIn, Facebook. I would tell you to go to Amazon, but it's not working where you can actually purchase all these things. But let's talk about it anyway. Since you guys are here, we appreciate you hanging out and uh, helping us muddle through our problems. So today we're going to talk about foldable electric bicycles. And uh, you're probably wondering what this thing on my face is. I get this question all the time because I ride all over the place with this. I don't wear sunglasses anymore. I wear this. Why? There's a couple of reasons. Number one, it gives you some really solid protection. It's not just protecting your eyes, it's actually protecting your entire face. I've spoken to physical therapists and physicians, actually we met somebody on the, on the cruise who is a physician. And he was telling me that people, when they fall off bicycles, we started talking about bicycles. When you fall off bicycles, sometimes you could break your jaw or your nose because there's no protection. The helmets are great, they're definitely a must have, but you need to protect the rest of this beautiful face. Yours especially, not mine so much, but this will actually protect part of your cheekbones. It'll protect your nose because this will take the impact. It's some kind of super polycarbonate. Yes, it might crack, but better this crack than your face. You know what I mean? So this is actually going to protect your cheeks and actually part of your jaw and probably your teeth too. Have you ever had teeth injuries? If you play hockey and or kind of other sports? Uh, with a lacrosse or something with a hard ball. I mean, people have, I've actually taken a baseball injury to the mouth and it's terrible. And uh, so this thing is going to protect you. So it looks a little funny, but I'll tell you what, it looks like when you wear a, a bicycle helmet, which I'm going to show you next, it looks like you have a motorcycle helmet on. So this is actually affording you the protection of almost the protection of a motorcycle helmet with a bicycle helmet. It's going to keep flies out of your mouth. That's always a good thing. And it's going to keep your eyes nice and uh, clean. I can't tag anything because uh, I'm still, all right, we're, so if they come in later, we'll just, uh, we'll invite them in. They're guests now. So this is the Giro bicycle helmet. After the live, I'm going to put links. I'll put our affiliate links. We are Amazon affiliates and we are affiliates for many of these bike companies too. Uh, so we'll put all those links in the description after the live is over. If you want to shuttle back, check that out. I almost look like it's a motorcycle helmet. Can you see that? Felicia, can you see this where you're watching? Yeah. It looks like a motorcycle. Look at all this protection. So you're getting the protection. This is a great helmet. This is the Giro. I think it's called G-I-R-O. I think it's a town. It has the M-I-P-S and you can see that. It usually has a little sticker on the side. Now what is M-I-P-S? It's like a multiple injury protection system where the helmet, in the event of a rotational fall, like usually when you fall, you're not gonna fall straight down. You're kind of gonna turn. You're gonna probably try to save yourself. So this will actually spin a little bit and take that pressure, that turn, that rotational injury away from you. And the helmet will essentially sacrifice itself. Now these are nice. I got the adult large for men, but my I'm about just about six feet tall and about 180 some pounds. I should have got the XL. 
but this does just barely fit. They are all adjustable. You just turn this little guy in the back. You can tighten it up. I've got it all the way open as high as I can get it. But the MIPS is the key which you want to look for. This is the difference between the inexpensive helmets and the helmets that are, I'd say, $50, $60 and above. You can actually buy helmets that are upwards of $200. Do you really need them? Probably not. As long as you got this MIPS protection, you're in pretty good shape and something for your eyes as well, because things do happen. I've fallen. Felicia has, well, have you? You haven't fallen yet. No, I haven't. <laughs> She's much more careful than it. Actually, my fall was really stupid. It was wet pavement. I turned the wheel a little too hard on my first electric bike. I must have accelerated. The back wheel got out from under me and I fell on my shoulder. Fortunately, I actually did some damage to my hand too. So if I was wearing gloves, gloves are another great idea. Protect yourself on these things, especially on these electric bikes. I've got five of them here we're gonna talk about today. They go upwards of 20 miles an hour. Now that might not seem like it's very fast when you're riding in a car, but when you're on two wheels and there's no walls or windows or doors to protect you, um, it can cause some damage. So just be careful if you're gonna do these things. How many of you people already have e-bikes? Anybody out there in Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Twitch? I don't even know where we are now. <laughs> We're everywhere but Amazon? <laughs> okay. Um, it's funny because they paid us to do this. All right. So let's talk about some of the other accessories we have too. I have the helmets. They actually make these Giro helmets for men and women. The women's are obviously a little bit smaller. That is coming up. Oh, look, it's mirrored. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's negative. It's reversed in the camera, but it's pretty cool. So, um, these are probably my favorite helmets, probably the best helmets you get for the MIPS protection. I am on my knees here because we're in an apartment. And the fact that I can get five bicycles in an apartment has to say something about these foldable electric bikes. I love these things so much. We get two of them in the back of a 1997 Jeep, which is phenomenal. The fact that you can do that is pretty amazing. All right, so the Giro available for men and women. You can buy these on Amazon. You can buy them pretty much at any major bike store. I haven't seen these in the sports stores, but I haven't really looked for these lately. Giro is a great brand. And again, look for that MIPS sticker, which will save your body in the event that you do fall. And it'll take some of the corrective action out, which could prevent, uh, I don't know, I guess I, this physician told me it could prevent something like a whiplash or something on a bicycle. Not that you think about getting whiplash, but when you fall, you never know how you're going to fall, the position you're going to be in, what you're going to hit. A lot of strange things can happen. We don't want you to get hurt. That's the most important thing. So look for the MIPS protection. And these Giro helmets are awesome. They run about 50 to 65 bucks, but uh, your head is worth it. I mean, your body's worth saving. You only get one of those. You can't really replace it. To the best of my knowledge, unless you're in the matrix. All right, and people always ask me about my bike shorts. This is my modeling. You ready? Dun, 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 dun. Check out these shorts. These are, I don't even know how to say this. This is Berigshar. Berigshar, and these are on Amazon too. I will include the links for these as well. A whole bunch of pockets, which is really important, unless you have bags on your bike. And we do have bags on a couple of these that we're going to show you in a little bit. And uh, a great way, because when you get off your bike, you want to carry your stuff. You want to carry your keys. Maybe you want to carry, some of these electric bikes actually have keys. You can't start them without the key, and it's kind of a security or a theft prevention thing. When I grow up, I'm going to get a cameraman in the studio. It's going to be so awesome, really. But I'll never grow up, so I'm probably not going to. What? So these are the shorts. Very cool. They come in a bunch of different colors. And again, I will put the links for these as well. Um, should we just go into the bikes, or should we talk about the seats? Let's talk about the seats really quick. All right, a lot of people see these bikes and some of the lower cost bikes, these are all under $2,000. You wanted to keep the cost down, especially if you're first trying it out. I always recommend if you're going into something for the first time, you've never had an electric bike, then you should probably try a less expensive one before you decide to spend a tremendous amount of money on the very, very expensive name brands, which you can spend upwards of $10,000 on these things. And I think it's kind of silly. You really want to feel it out. See if you like it first for a couple of reasons. Number one, it might be too scary. I've talked to some people, some of the older people we talked to were like, yeah, 20 miles an hour, it really scared me. Actually, our first e-bikes we bought used. And there was a woman who said, it's just too fast. She didn't feel comfortable going that fast on a bicycle. 
And we told her, well, you could just pedal on it. She's like, no, nah, I guess want to use the throttle. It feels like a motorcycle. We'll talk about that in a second too. But some of these bikes, the sub, it was the, the $1,200, $1,300 range will come with seats that some people, especially older people, won't find real comfortable. The good news is you can replace this fairly easily with something like this. Look at that. This is the biker. <laughs> Look at the size difference in these seats, man. This is the most insane thing. Now, this, I actually love this seat. It's a big seat. This is the original seat. It could eat this thing. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. And this has a lot more padding on it. I mean, they have to cut costs in some places. Unfortunately, some of these people have given us beautiful seats with these bikes that are standard. But in some cases, you're going to end up with a really thin, hard seat. It's really meant for racing. And when you get a little bit older, you're not really interested in racing. You just want to commute. You want to go somewhere and do something with these bikes. Should I just go through the whole thing? We'll talk about the e-bikes. Just keep trying them if they decide to pop on later. It is what it is. We're still going here. All right. So is it really? All right. So there are some issues. We don't know if they're using their phones. Do you want to go live with the phone? I tried. You did? I did. You changed it? Uh -huh. Okay. All right. They'll catch on if they catch on. If they don't, they're lost, right? All right. So let's go through the little slideshow here. I prepared this little thing. Let's talk about some of the features and uh, considerations about electric bikes before you get into it. All right. Let's see if this works. It's one of those days when nothing's working. For the first time, we have everything together and someone else doesn't. So things happen. It is what it is. All right. So electric bicycles, let's talk about them. Biking, in my opinion, is greater than walking for exercise, for uh, transportation. You can get where you're going faster. You can go further. You can carry things on these things. You can actually distribute the weight. If you do like a DoorDash or some kind of delivery service, we saw a guy from Grubhub on an electric bicycle the other day going around the circle, actually riding with traffic. It's a, a neighborhood kind of situation. The speed limit is about 25 miles an hour. He had a class three e-bike. We'll talk about the classes in a second. And he was able to keep up with traffic. He's able to go upwards of 28 miles an hour. So he can actually ride with traffic, much like a scooter or a motorcycle can. So I like, I mean, you're outside, you're exercising, and that's great. If you don't have a bike, by all means, get out there and walk. Very important to get some exercise, get some vitamin D, get some sun on your skin. It's good for you. Try it. You'll like it. Some fresh air. And also, in my opinion, e-bikes are greater than bikes. Why? If you've ever ridden a traditional bicycle into the wind, now we're here on the east coast of Florida and just today, the winds are upwards of 25 miles an hour. It's like nor'easter blowing through here. It's ridiculous. So if you're riding into the wind, I mean, the wind could change directions, right? If you're going somewhere, maybe you're riding to your friend's house or to a restaurant or you're doing some shopping or something, and the wind's got your back. It's pushing you. It's an easy ride, right? Well, the problem is you got to ride home. And then if that wind stays in the same direction, which it usually does, it's going to be in your face, making it very, very difficult to pedal. And that's where the e-bikes come in. If you're tired, you can use the motor assist, is what these things have. And it'll tell me about the motor assist, Felicia. Are you able to ride? You hated riding into the wind, didn't you? I did. And now you can do it, I can do seamlessly? it seamlessly? Seamlessly. She can ride into the wind. I actually, I ride into the wind all the time and it's like effortless. Actually, our daughter said that I hate riding into the wind because it's always so windy in our neighborhood. The electric bikes gives you that little bit of extra push with the motor. It will allow you to ride into the wind seamlessly. Now, you don't have to use it. First and foremost, all these bicycles I'm going to show you today are bicycles. You can turn the motor off, disconnect the battery, and ride these like heavy bicycles, which will give you a little bit more of a workout. That's a great idea as well. You're still getting that good exercise, plus you're pushing more weight. Some of these are upwards of, um, these are all about 60 to 70 pounds. So a traditional bike, a 20 inch bike is probably about 20 pounds maybe. So you're pushing all that additional weight in addition to yourself. So you're getting a little bit more exercise when you ride these manually, analogically, is that a word? Analogically, analogically. Is that even a word? I don't even know. Yes, the other day I was on a cruise. I said cremation. I put cremation in my coffee. Everyone's <laughs> laughing at me. You don't put cremation in your coffee? No. 
So you can ride these just like a regular bicycle, get a tremendous workout. If your battery runs out, a lot of people will talk about that. And we'll talk about battery anxiety, which is actually a medical condition, believe it or not. You can still ride these as a bicycle. If you have a Tesla or an electric car and you run out of battery juice, you're stuck. You got to call a tow truck, get somebody to come out and charge you. These, you can ride them like a bicycle and that's great. Now, cheating. What is cheating? Now, this isn't so much like e-bikes have been around since 2008, believe it or not. But they've just in the last year or two started to get really popular. And you'll see these bicycle purists will ride by you and say, hey, cheater, if you're riding an e-bike, because they assume that you're just letting the motor do all the work. And then the funny part is this jerk that's riding in their, their manual analog bike gets up and puts it in his big gas guzzling F-150 diesel, okay? They're not cheating, you're assisting. And it's just ignore these people, okay? They're not saying it. We don't see it as much anymore. Like a couple of years ago, we used to hear this, but it's not so much anymore. But be prepared that there are some purists out there on some of the bike trails. <laughs> you cheater. Just uh, show them the international sign of friendship with that one special finger and they'll go away. You don't have to worry about them. As you whiz by them, as they're struggling to get up that hill and you're flying by at 20 miles an hour, you know, you're going to win. You're winning already, you know what I mean? You're getting out there, especially if you're a little bit older. A lot of people 50, 60, 70 years old are riding these e-bikes because they can't ride traditional analog bikes. They just don't have the stamina, the energy, the power to carry them up those hills or into the wind anymore. So you're not cheating. All right, a lot of people say, well, I don't know how to ride a motorcycle. I've never ridden a motorcycle. And these are essentially motorcycles because they're motors on cycles, right? But no, these have nothing to do with motorcycles. They're much smaller motors, although the torque can be surprisingly similar. Torque means the amount of force when you start off. Some of these bikes, not these so much, but the bigger ones will actually throw you back in your seat if you're not ready for it. But you don't have to shift. There's no gasoline. You don't have to do oil changes. The maintenance is a lot less expensive and a lot less frequent. And uh, there's no licensing laws in most states for these yet. It could be down the road, but I think in your class one or class two, which uh, two of these are class twos, class threes, we'll talk about in a second. And... Um, you don't need a motorcycle license. You don't need to have ever ridden a motorcycle. There's no shifting. They're not as powerful. And they do use clean energy because it's, well, a lot of people will say, well, you have to generate the electricity somewhere. And that's a dirty process. True, but some of it comes from nuclear. Some of it comes from solar. Some of it comes from wind farms. It is a cleaner energy. We should say it's cleaner energy than putting gas in there and putting a whole bunch of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide in the atmosphere, you know what I mean? So a little bit cleaner. So you're going to save the environment by riding these things too. Plus, have you seen the price of gas lately? All of a sudden, these electric people are seeming pretty smart now, aren't they? And insurance. Talking about some of the negatives, because I want you to, to, to be prepared for this. Now, a lot of people will buy these bikes upwards of a somewhere between 800 to what we're going to show you today, about 1600 bucks, I think, at the top end. And it can be a lot more. Most of these will not be covered under traditional homeowners policies. Why? Because there is an exclusion. And check your policy. Most of them have an exclusion for any device that will move you around that is powered by a motor of any sort that does not serve handicapped people. So you can have a motorized wheelchair or a sit-down scooter if it's meant or built to move a handicapped person around with a bona fide handicap. But these things are just considered motorized bicycles, and they are unfortunately excluded under most homeowners and car insurance policies. So insurance provides a bit of a dilemma. What if it gets stolen? What if it gets wrecked? What if uh, I get into an accident with it, right? These are probably not going to be covered under your traditional insurance policy. So fortunately, there are companies who do write bicycle insurance. There's one company called Velo Insurance, Velo Insurance, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Well, I spoke to the owner of that company the other day, really good guy, very knowledgeable. And he provides the coverage that all the other insurance companies lack, the biggest company. They're underwritten by a company called Merkel or something. But uh, they do provide very affordable policies that cover theft and also, more importantly, liability. If you happen to hit somebody or something and they sue you, there is coverage available. A lot of people have been supplementing their regular coverage with motorcycle coverage. And some insurance companies are now starting to develop riders for motorized bicycles too. So check with your insurance agent if you have one of those and check your policy to make sure you have coverage. If you don't, 
you might want to look into that if you have a bunch to protect. Like me, I'm broke like a joke. I got nothing to protect. What do I need insurance? But I still got insurance anyway, just in case because things happen. And the other bit of bad news, most of these, there is some assembly required. Now, a couple of these, I'm going to show you some videos, uh, some B-roll, which I can do now because I'm not on Amazon. Are we on Amazon yet? <laughs> Okay, so um, we're trying. We're trying to put that together. So I do have some B-roll of these things, and Amazon won't let me show you riding a bicycle without a helmet. No, they won't. In like 29 states, there are no helmet laws. You should, let me preface this by saying it's always a good idea to wear a helmet. But in some states, in some situations, some localities, you don't have to. When I'm riding on the beach here in Florida, I don't feel like I need to wear a helmet. I mean, a lot of people disagree with me, but if I'm going to fall, I'm going to fall in the water. I'm going to fall in the sand. And I'm not going as fast on the beach as I would on a road. But I guess there's a bunch of lawyers who know better than I do. I don't know. But um, so anyway, I can show you some of that footage of us riding on the sand today. And these are pretty cool. We do have a whole bunch of videos on our YouTube channel, which I can't talk about, which is Fresh and Felicia. Go to YouTube at Fresh and Felicia. We're also on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn under either Chuck Fresh or one of those other identities. And you can find a whole bunch of videos of us riding and demonstrating and actually unboxing and building each and every one of these bikes that we're gonna show you today. So a little bit of assembly. Do you have to be a mechanic to put these together? Absolutely not. And there are a ton of videos, including the videos on our social media channels that will show you how to install and assemble these things step-by-step -step very simple, very easy. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Even Felicia could do it, believe it or not. So there's a little bit of assembly required on most of these electric bicycles because they're going to ship from your house unless you buy it from a local dealer. Always a great idea because you have somebody to go back to and they probably have some mechanic skills. If you're totally dead set against it, if you don't build your own Ikea furniture, then you probably want to have a professional bicycle mechanic put these together for you make sure everything's tight make sure everything's working we've got a great guy named super dave in our area does all our work here shout out to super dave if he's watching and uh he is awesome does all our stuff we send everybody to him he does a great job very knowledgeable about all these bikes he's actually building a solar bike which is incredible i can't wait to see that all right so let's talk about these bikes three modes of power on electric bicycles you have number one pedal only First and foremost, these e-bikes are also bicycles. You can forget the key, you can leave the battery, you can run the battery down, you can not even put the battery in it and ride it like a bicycle. Most of these have seven gears, Shimano shifters, state-of-the-art stuff you're gonna find on higher end regular bicycles. So that is awesome, they are bicycles. You can pedal your little heart out if you want to. Number two, they have pedal assist, meaning that you're pedaling and they have sensors, little magnetic sensors built in these things as the magnets fly by the sensors They're like, oh, well, he's pedaling and he has the pedal assist on in his computer. So let me give him a little bit of a push, which means the motor is assisting you while you're pedaling. You're still pedaling. You're still providing power and motion, but the motor is going to give you a little bit of a push and bring you a little bit faster. You could set that as low as you want or as high as you want. They're all completely adjustable. And that is really cool. And on all of these bikes, you can open her up and just like a motorcycle, you can do throttle only. Don't pedal, let your feet hang out and just chill. And like Felicia does, she just does throttle only. <laughs> Ride it like a scooter kind of, like one of those motorized two wheel scooters. Throttle only, you can do that too until the battery dies. And we'll talk about range again in a second. That's the big question. All of these have a removable lithium ion rechargeable battery. So yes, you can park your bike downstairs in your garage, remove the battery and take it into your home or your apartment, your garage, somewhere else. You can take it into your place of work if you ride it to work and charge your battery outside of the bicycle. You can also charge it in the bicycle. But the point is the battery is removable in all these bikes, except for the one I'll show you at the end. You take the battery out and just charge it wherever you want. And it's also a security feature too. If you lock it up at work, if you gotta leave it outside and you're not watching it all day, if you take the battery out, well, you've removed an incentive to steal your bike because you don't have a fully, they do have locks on these things. We'll talk about that too, but removable, a rechargeable lithium ion battery. So the big question we get is how far can I go? I apologize if I'm not keeping up with the questions here. I think we have some questions on some of the social media. All right, uh, tap in the chat. Uh, if you're on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitch, Twitter, I think I can see the chat 
in here and I'll stop in a second when I start uh, the video demonstration and we'll address some of those questions when we'll try. If I don't know the answer, we'll look it up and we'll get back to you later. That's the beauty of social media. I'll post that stuff in there for you later, as well as links to all this stuff too on Amazon and our affiliate links. Since we're not on Amazon, we can talk about that. So we're affiliates for all these bike companies as well. They did send this to us, these bikes to us for promotional consideration. So thank you to these companies, to JCON, to WTVA, to Angui, and uh, Hey Bike, and also DVU, which is a surprisingly cool bike, which I'll show you at the end of this thing. All right, range. This is the big question. How far can I go? How far can I expect to go on a single charge on one of these electric bikes? There is no straight answer. There are estimates only. And we like to benchmark somewhere between 20 to 55 miles. Most people are not going to go further than 20 miles. If you're going to work, if you're going to school, if you're riding to see your friend, going to a local shopping center, that's 20 miles round trip. That's 10 there, 10 back. And on the top end of that, you're looking at 50 to 55 miles. Now, what does that depend on? Depends on a number of factors. It's physics, people. We have weather. We have incline. How many hills do you have to go up? And what's the degree you have to go up on those hills? How much do you weigh? Because the heavier you are, the more work the motor has to do. So that is a factor. The wind direction that we talked about earlier, if that wind's hitting you in the face at 30 miles an hour, well, that's going to slow you down. The motor's going to have to do more work, and it's going to use more of the battery. Tire inflation. The lower inflated your tires are, the smoother your ride might be, but the more resistance you're going to encounter and the more work, again, the motor has to do. What about starts and stops? One of the most difficult things that an electric bike motor will have to do is start from a dead stop. That's the most power, the most energy it's going to use. So if you can pedal a little bit from those dead stops, drop it down the first gear and start pedaling and help that motor, give it a little boost, then you're going to be able to go a lot further because the motor, again, doesn't have to work as hard. And of course, we talked about your pedal assist. How much are you willing to pedal? How much are you willing to help this bicycle do what it needs to do? You can pedal. How much pedal assist? If you pedal assist, you could probably get upwards of 40 to 55 miles. So, and you should pedal assist. It's not hard. It's like pedaling a traditional bicycle, except you're already moving and you've got a little bit of motor behind you, giving you a little push along. So that's pretty cool. So that's the range. And there is something called range anxiety. A lot of people are afraid that their battery is going to wear out before they get home. And I'm telling you, since these are bikes, you don't have to worry about that as much. You know, worst comes to worst, you can walk at home, but pedal that bad boy. I think you're going to be okay. The controller. Now, all these bikes have something called a controller. It's essentially a little computer that's built in, and it will tell you a whole bunch of information. It can tell you how much battery level is left. It's going to tell you the pedal assist level that you've determined. Do you want to do pedal assist one through five in most cases? Five, one's the least assistance from the motor, five's the most. It'll tell you that information. It's going to tell you your speed. Good thing about this is they're global. You can go uh, in miles per hour or kilometers per hour. Is it kilometers per hour? How do they say that in Canada? Kilometers? Kilometers? Kilometers per hour is going to give you your speed, like your real speed and it will measure that pretty accurately. We've actually tested it against our car. And you have an odometer and a trip meter, so you can see how far you've gone and kind of gauge how much. Well, you can look at your battery level, too, and uh, see how many miles you put on it. That's helpful when it's time to bring your e-bike in for maintenance. All right, almost all these bikes have a seven-speed Shimano shifter. Some of them have eight. Some of them have five. Most of them are going to have seven. Uh, I think all of these bikes have front suspension. They do. They have front. They actually have shock absorbers in the front. Uh, they all have disc brakes. Disc brakes are used on motorcycles. They're used when you really need some more serious stopping power. So when you get up to the speeds of 20 miles an hour, those traditional rim brakes or those wheel brakes, the little rubber things, the traditional ones you find on bikes really aren't going to do a great job. So the disc brakes have calipers and they have brake pads and it squeezes in on them and Gives you a little more force and stopping power. So when you need to stop, you're sure you're going to be able to stop. There's all adjustable and everything. And most of these come pre-adjusted from the factory. So you don't have to worry about that. But again, if you have any questions, take it to your local, local bike mechanic, to your local Super Dave, and uh, they will be able to help you out. Uh, most of these come with lights. So you can ride at night. Or some people like to turn their lights on during the day for that increased visibility. Always good to be seen because a lot of cars unfortunately, don't look for bicycles. They're expecting to see other cars or bigger things on the road, and 
pedestrians and animals and bicycles are kind of the second tier. You know what I mean? If you drive a car, sometimes you're not looking for those things like, oh, where'd that come from? You know, it's thinner. It's not as big as you're expecting and you're tuning out and doing whatever you're doing, listening to your favorite music. And so just be seen. It's more, very, very important to be seen. Wear light, bright clothing and a lot of protection, that helmet, your gloves and all that stuff. And most of these have a rear rack. Some of them don't. Some of the less expensive ones don't, but they do have a space where you can add that on yourself later on. And most of these manufacturers do offer custom rear racks that fit these bikes wonderfully. And we'll get into that when we show you that in a bit. All right, most of these bikes are going to have puncture resistant tires. They have either four inch or three inch. There are some bikes that have two inch as well, a little bit thicker than your typical tires. Um, it's nice that they're puncture resistant, so they're gonna take some of the fear of getting a flat tire on because an electric bicycle with a flat tire is a bad day. You're trying to walk this 60 pound monster home, it's gonna be a problem. So we'll talk about uh, flat out, which is a great idea too. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the show too. Recommend putting that in your tires. But uh, the fat tires are gonna give you better grip. There's more resistance on the road, so it's a little bit more difficult to pedal, but in exchange for that, you're getting more grip, a safer ride, a smoother ride, and you can take it over grass. The best thing about these things is we have golf carts in our community, and sometimes they don't realize that we have the right of way as bicycles. And they will kind of just come down right the middle of these golf cart sidewalks, they're called these big eight foot sidewalks, and they won't move out of your way. Especially the kids, they have like 12 year olds driving this thing, it's ridiculous. So we can actually ride in the grass. And if you've ever ridden a bike through grass, you realize that resistance is terrible, it slows down, it's really hard to pedal. Not when you hit the throttle and it's just like, shoo, and the kids are like, how do you do that? I thought it was gonna slow you down, man. Not with these bad boys. The big tires and the motors are gonna allow you to ride through dirt, some light trails, through grass. We even take them on the beach and ride through sand. I did a loose sand ride the other day, which was fabulous on one of these bikes. Almost caught air, it scared the devil out of me. So the big tires you're gonna find on most of these foldable bikes as well. Safety features. Now, they have to have safety, if you're dealing with a motor, anytime you're dealing with motorized propulsion, you need some kind of safety features. So the first thing all these bikes have, when you hit the brake pedal, it sends a message, a digital message to the motor and cuts the motor off. So if you ever have, you feel like you're going too fast, you've got the throttle full on, once you hit either of those brake pedals, it's gonna cut the motor right away, instantly, and you're gonna slow down no matter what. So that's a nice safety feature, and that's on all of these bikes too. Most of these have a front LED headlight, super bright for riding at night, and also, as we discussed, to be seen. And some of them have a rear tail light. Some will actually become a brake light. So when you hit the brakes and you have your lights on, it'll start to blink, so somebody riding behind you will know that you're applying the brakes especially good to be seen at night or when you're riding dusk or dawn, if you're riding uh, in these strange times, if you're actually taking them to work. And again, some of them have that brake light. So that is nice. Lots of safety features on these guys. So that is very cool. All right, now all of these bikes, except one have a key. I think almost all the foldables are have keys that I am aware of. And they will send, the manufacturer will send two keys and those are the only two keys in the world that you're ever going to get with these bikes. So if you lose those keys, you're in trouble. So don't lose them. Bad day. Uh, what they will do is either unlock the, the battery from the bike so you can remove it and take it and charge it or just keep it with you if you're in a, like a CD place. Um, it will turn it on on some bikes. You can't run it without. Or it will just lock the battery in place. The important thing is to make sure you keep one of those keys somewhere safe because it, I don't think you can copy them either. Once you lose those keys, it's done. That battery is actually attached to the key. And once it's gone, it's gone. That battery is useless. I understand they can't make uh, custom keys for these either. So, And uh, there's zero second chances. So make sure you hang on to that key. Keep it somewhere safe, at least one of them somewhere safe. And uh, make sure you don't lose them. So again, foldable electric bicycles. The bonus is you can fold these guys up and take them anywhere. Take it to the beach, take it to the park, take it to the in-laws house, take it to places where you could never take a bike before because you didn't have a big enough car or your SUV had too much stuff in the back or the car is just too big to fit in the back or you're not sure how to take the wheel off. You don't have to take the wheels off and I'll show you, I'll do a demonstration of one of these bikes where you can actually fold it in half. Actually, all of these bikes, all four of these here are folded in my tiny little apartment. 
They are folded. This is how this is how big they are when they're folded, and the handlebars fold down too. So I'll do a demonstration on one of these in a little bit. We'll show you how to do that. There's actually some footage in the video. So now you can take these anywhere. Sometimes you want to go to the beach, but you got to ride over this car's only causeway to get to the beach. And the only way you could ride a bike on the beach is if you rent one. Well, now, isn't it nicer to bring your own bike? You understand it. You understand how it feels. You're used to the balance and everything. is so much better to bring your own bike to the beach. And now you can do that with these foldable bikes. Now, I do need to disclose that these bikes will weigh anywhere from 55 to about 70 pounds. If you start putting more accessories, they're going to be a little bit heavier. So you will need a little bit of upper body strength, but use your legs to lift those up into the back of a trunk or an SUV. Um, take, you can take the battery off. That'll shave nine, 10 pounds off of most of these bikes, but uh, you will need somebody with a little bit of upper body strength to pick them up and put them in the back of that SUV. So there's that. Uh, all right, so let's get into talking about some of these bikes. First one we're gonna talk about is the WTVA foldable electric bike. It's the beautiful orange one here. And you can pick one of these up at WTVA. I'll put all the links and everything in there, but let me show you a real quick video of uh, Felicia's experience with this wonderful bike. Hopefully it's here. All right, here she is. Fresh with Fresh and Felicia with a review of the WTVA electric bike. This is the HEBE 1.0. It's got some serious specs. And first of all, it's a great looking bike and one of the few electric bikes that comes in different colors. You get this red, yellow, I think you can get it in gray or black as well. But this red, it's kind of an orangey red, but it really pops real easy to see, which is definitely an advantage. We're talking a 750 watt brushless motor, super powerful. I actually, with pedal assist, was able to get this bike and this is the first e-bike I was ever able to get up to 30.2 miles an hour. But that is fast. Technically, that's speeding in some neighborhoods. You have the posted speed limit of 25. You could get a speeding ticket for this, so be careful. Don't do that. So I took it on some sidewalks. We're allowed to ride in the sidewalks in Florida and uh, on some streets. And uh, this thing is super responsive. It doesn't have a whole lot of torque, which is good because too much torque will actually throw you back in your seat. It actually makes me nervous. That's a nice, smooth acceleration. And I'm moving about 28 miles an hour here. I actually recorded it with one hand and I tapped out about 26, almost 27. It's scary doing it with one hand. And I got some drone footage here riding through the neighborhood. Now this bike can actually keep up with a lot of traffic in neighborhoods and that is actually a safety feature. So we're talking a 48 volt, 13 amp hour removable battery. Supposedly with pedal assist, you can get up to 48 miles range with one single charge out of this thing. That's pretty amazing, you get that much. I mean, you can go virtually anywhere. And the nice thing about this guy is it's foldable, okay? You can take this anywhere, take it to your favorite park, take it to the beach, take it to the mountains, take it to places you probably couldn't ride that may be past 48 miles. Because once you ride, remember it's two ways, you gotta ride one way and then back, so double that mileage. And the thing does get up and boogie, it's pretty cool. It comes mostly assembled. I do have a video on how to assemble this thing. It's pretty easy. Folds up really easy. It's got a little bit of weight to it. It's, uh, I think, 60-some pounds. Uh, but you take the battery off, it's gonna you're going to be able to lift it into your SUV or car much easier. But you could put two of these side-by-side side in the average SUV and, again, take them to the beach, to the mountains, to places you couldn't possibly ride your bike to because they're too far away from home. Super comfortable seat. It's got front suspension. It's going to take those bumps nicely and it just looks cool. Oh, and one of my favorite security features, you can't do anything without a key. They do give you two, but you have to turn it to a position to unlock the battery. And you also need to turn it to the on position for the electric features to work at all. And I think that's a great idea. A lot of bikes don't have this feature. It is a step through. Now, if you're older, it's about 15 and a half inches, almost 16 inches to step through. Some of the other bikes are a little too high, but it's real easy just to swing your leg through this bike and get on it very comfortably. Height wise, we're looking at about 5'3 to 6'3. I'm just about six feet tall. This thing fits me great. It's a really nice bike and a great choice. WTVA electric bike. We like it. I like it. And here it is right here, live and in person. They say it's red, but I think it looks more like orange, don't you? Yeah, it's kind of orange. But still, nonetheless, very cool that it's a different color other than black. I think they do offer it in yellow and, uh, oh, there I am over here. And some other colors as well. We can get the gray and black. I think, is there white? 
I'm not even sure. Again, we'll pop the link in there uh, when I can get to that. All right, so this is the bike. It's in the folded position. So everybody's like, well, can you unfold this for me? Can you show me what it looks like unfolded? So should I do it? You should do it. All right, so it's folded up in the folded position. I pulled it out of my car. This thing's about, I'm not sure how much this one weighs. I think this is about 60 some pounds. So you're gonna pick this guy up and this is so easy. What you do wanna do is make sure your fingers never end up in here because it's like a giant nut crack cracker and it will take your finger off. I'm not gonna, there's a lot of weight, a lot of torque, a lot of pressure going in there. So make sure your body parts are away from this, which is where it's gonna close. So I'm gonna pick that up. Hopefully you can see that in the camera. All right, I'm gonna pick this guy up and I'm gonna close it like this. So this here, see how easy that is? And it's got a little doodad here. And I need to pull this out so I can complete the close. This is where you can end up getting in trouble. We still on camera? Yep. All right. Where is it here? Oh, there it is. And then you take this down, pop it in here. I apologize, it's not on camera. And then we can close that up so it's real tight. Loosen that up. And there's a quick release valve. I'll turn it around and show you what I'm doing here in a second. Close that guy up. And then if I move this back a little bit, I'll show you. Same thing with the handlebars. So the handlebars will move up like this. And then you lock this guy in. Boom. You've got a fully functional bike. That's it. Those two little things. Let me turn it around and show you here. Try to deadlift this thing. Whoa! knocking the camera over or the bikes that would be pretty cool wouldn't it all right so there she is this is the little quick release thing here and to take it apart you just undo the quick release and then pull it up and then it just i won't do it again but just so you know what's going on here and this thing's pretty tight i'm gonna make sure there's not going to come apart while you're riding it's got a little safety switch in there too so it's not going to go anywhere and then this guy too, this locks in and there she is. She's ready to go pop the, uh, oh, the pedals fold up too. I always forget to tell people about these. So you just kind of pop these out like so. Now your pedals are out. So that'll save a couple of inches in the back of your SUV or your car as well. A lot of people will keep these in their apartments and um, it's a lot easier to keep a foldable bike in your apartment than it is a traditional bike if you have to keep it inside if there's nowhere else to keep this guy this thing's pretty svelte all right i'm going to ask felicia if she can get over here and the nice thing about this model is it's a step through and i think you saw it in the video felicia is how how tall are you five, three. felicia is five three and i want felicia to come out here we're just going to show her foot stepping over now, you felt a little uncomfortable stepping over some of these bikes, right? Yes. But this one, how does this feel? This is about 15, almost 16 inches. You can easily get your leg over that, right? Yeah. So older people are going to have a much less of a problem mounting these bikes. Because oh, yeah. the other ones that are not step-throughs, they have the bar here. A lot of men prefer these, too, when you get upwards in age, too. I'll tell you what, it's a lot easier to get on this than swinging your leg around the back of this thing. This is a really, really cool design, and it's foldable. Thank you, Felicia. Thank you, Vanna. Mm -hmm. A much smarter design than some of the other ones. Now, WTVA offers a couple other bikes as well. They've got some other nice bikes. But this one, for an older person, for a woman, for somebody who's not super tall, this is actually a really, really great design. It's one of my favorite designs for a bike. It's got your seven-speed shifter here. Your Shimano gears, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, God, there's still sand all over this. <laughs> we took this baby on the beach, too. You can see all the sand here. You probably clean that off. We didn't ride through water on it, but uh, sand's going to probably require a little bit of cleaning for the chain and the cassette here. Um, it's got the removable battery. And it did come with this nice seat. This is actually a very, very nice seat. It's a surprisingly chunky seat. We came with this guy so i was very impressed with that and you can adjust the height too it'll go up as high as you want and again i'm close to six foot and i can ride this thing fairly easily it does have the removable battery 
So you can put the key in on the other side, take this battery out and charge it in your home or your apartment or your workplace. If you ride this to work and you have a, say a 15 mile ride to work with a lot of incline, you could charge this battery at work by taking it out of the battery right at your desk or in the front lobby or wherever it's safe to charge these things and then pop it back on your bike on your way home. So you do have that flexibility. Also, if you leave it somewhere, and you don't want to leave it fully hooked up, the battery will lock in place. That's one of the things the key will do. It'll lock in place, which is the security feature, but this way you don't have some idiot trying to pull your battery out. So it's always better to take it with you if you're going inside somewhere. So it's a very, very nice bike. It's a great ride. And again, this is the only bike I've been able to get up to 31 miles an hour. It's the only bike I really tried it with. It just feels good. It's just a really smooth, uh, safe, stable ride. How did you feel about this one? I love it. Yeah, this is a nice bike. So WTVA will put all, you can find the uh, website yourself. Just do a website search for WTVA. They also sell these on Amazon as well, but I'll put the links to our affiliate links, our affiliate accounts for WTVA in our video after we're done here. Uh, 20 inch tires with the four inch wide chunky. And uh, these are metal. They look plastic, but these are actually metal wheels. So you don't have to worry about the spokes getting bent. So that's kind of a neat design as well. It does come with fenders and this rear rack. This has the mouse trap in the back. Kind of dig this. Don't put your fingers in here. Come here, give me your fingers. <laughs> so this will actually hold down, I don't know, a bag or papers or something. It's kind of hard to see that on the video, but this actually comes standard. This was all standard with this bike. Fenders. Do you really need fenders? Only if you ride through water or some dirt and you don't want the stuff kicking up on you or the person behind you. I typically don't put them on, but I had to put them on uh, since they sent us this bike. We have to show it the way that it is intended to be shown. It's got this nice rear light and LED, super bright rear light and also the front headlight. It's got the digital controller. This is a class three bike. I don't think we mentioned the classes. There's three classes of electric bicycles. It's class one, which is uh, pedal assist only up to about 20 miles an hour, I believe, and correct me in the chat if I'm wrong on these things. Um, so pedal assist up to about 20 miles an hour with no throttle. Class two is pedal assist plus a throttle up to about 20 miles an hour. So you have a throttle, which means you can totally open up the throttle and not pedal it at all. And the class three is the same as class two, except the motor is bigger. It's up to, I think, 750 watts, and the top speed's about 28 miles an hour. Now, again, it sounds slow, but 28 miles an hour on a bike is fast. How fast did you go, Felicia, before you were uncomfortable? You need to think about 25, and I get a little uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, about 25, yeah. It does get a little scary out there when you start moving, and you see that sidewalk and people, and you're passing cars. <laughs> It's like, whoa, we're slowed out. So that is a pretty good, 28 miles an hour on a bicycle is a good clip. And it's, I'm telling you, if you've never done it before, the first time you do, you're going to be like, whoa, I'm going to slow down now. So uh, the class three, and this is a class three, has a 750 watt motor versus the 500 watts we're going to show you in a little bit here. And this will do throttle only or pedal assist up to about 28 plus miles an hour. You can pedal assist, actually make it go faster in the right situation. Great bike, super high quality, very affordable too. These are under $1,500, I believe. Check the prices. I think the prices are going up a little bit because of the demand and there's also that shortage of uh, computer chips too. But it's not like the Harley Davidson bike, which is like $8,000. It's not like the Pedego bikes, which are upwards of 4,000 bucks. You don't need to spend a lot of money. I actually recommend if this is your first electric bike, get something like this. Try it out, see if you love it. And if you love it, then you can decide if you if an upgrade's even necessary. I think you're gonna be so happy with this thing that uh, you're just gonna keep this forever. It's a nice looking bike too. It looks a lot like some of the other ones. There's only a couple of manufacturers who make these. I think there's four major manufacturers in China who make the bikes, even for the companies who call themselves American companies. There's really nothing solidly made here. Maybe some of them are assembled here, but all these parts are made overseas, unfortunately. I'm not aware of anybody who actually makes everything right here in the States, unfortunately, but that may change. We'll see what happens down the line. So this is the WTVA. It's called the HEBE 1.0. Again, WTVA has a bunch of other stuff. They have some 26 inch bikes as well. So make sure you check those out. And I think they're on Amazon as well. I put links in here, but we're not 
on Amazon. So I'm going to pull this guy out of the way. And we're going to look at, I've got four other bikes to show you. And uh, these are all interesting as well. They're all about in the same price range. So that is a good thing. Kickstand is included. Yes, I always forget to mention that. All right, so the next bike up here, I'm off camera. All right, so let's look at the Angui, the other 750 watt. Let's take a look at some of the features there. Which is into these electric bikes as well, but she had a big 26 inch, which is too big for her. She's only 5'3". So we tried this Angui. It's a very, very nice foldable e-bike. Not too high to step over. She can kick her leg over the back easily and it's foldable so you could take it anywhere. So she likes taking this out to dinner. We go to our local restaurants at our shopping center over there. She said it's really easy to ride. It's got a 750 watt motor so she can finally keep up with me. This thing will hit 28 miles an hour in level five of pedal assist or throttle. As a matter of fact, the thing is a beast. The battery lasts quite a while and gets, it's not unlikely or uncommon to get 40, 50 miles out of this thing if you're pedaling it on flat land like we are here in Florida. But she said it's, it's really easy to ride. She said it's very stable and very comfortable as well. The big four inch tires will let you go over grass and dirt. We got a little bit of that going on in our construction areas here and that is no problem with the Angui bike. It's, it's, it's a very nice ride. I've ridden this thing several times myself. And it's got a full seven speed Shimano shifter on there. So you can ride it like a bicycle. You can actually get a really good workout by turning the electricity off and just riding it like a heavy bicycle. It'll make your legs and your arms work a little bit harder. So that's pretty cool. So I'm following her along the back pass here. We have nice wide bike trails here in central Florida. So real nice places to ride. And, uh, yeah, this is a win. This is I didn't think we were going to be able to find a, a a bike that would fit her. And she really likes it. She actually likes the look of this, too. It's a subtle gray. It's not too bright. It doesn't attract a lot of attention. And she says it's just a lot of fun to ride. The back rack came with it standard. She, she got her bag on there. You put your sweater in there, a bottle of water on the end, and your little bike, your, uh, your phone holder on the front. And really, it's everything. It's like a little moped, really. So we're going to take these in our RV, take them down to Key West, and uh, really ride over the, all over the country with this thing. But yeah, this Angui, it's great for women too. I was really surprised how much she likes it. And this is it, the Angui 750 watt. Uh, somebody asked in the chat about a shaft drive. I'm not really sure there is a shaft drive. Isn't that a gas transmission thing? They do have mid-drive motors, but those are way out of this price range. These are all... Uh, rear hub drive motor. So the motor is actually in the back wheel. But uh, in this price range, you can't get any other type of, you're really not going to be able to get a mid drive in here. People say some of the mid drives have a little bit more balance, but that's only for people who want to do some serious mountain biking and need to really flip up the wheel and do all kinds of tricks and weird stuff on them. For the average person, the rear drive, you're not even going to know the difference. It does mean all the weight is kind of in the back because that motor is pretty heavy. And uh, you're going to have the battery up front here. So I'm not sure which shaft. I don't think there is a shaft drive. That's like a truck, isn't it? <laughs> a transmission. So, yeah, thanks for your question. I, I apologize. We'll look into that after the show, see if uh, we can find anything about that. So the Angui, this is foldable too. What's neat about this is the battery is actually in the frame. I folded it up, put it back together. Again, these things are all foldable. Put them back in the in your back of your SUV or your car, wherever you want to put them. Get them out of the way. Fold them up in your apartment. Really nice, they take up a minimal amount of space. This has 20 inch tires too. Now you rode this, did you have a problem kicking your leg over this? A little bit, but if I leaned it towards me, tip, fine. tip and dip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you tip and dip this, you're not gonna have a problem if you're less than like five, six. The uh, recommended height I think is like five, two to about six, five. The seat is adjustable. The handlebars won't go up much higher than this. I don't, actually I think these go up a little bit, but. Um, it shouldn't be a problem. It all locks in here. It's got front suspension as well. And uh, this does not have rear suspension, but your tires are going to give you some of that suspension too. But the front suspension has got a shock absorber. I think I've got it locked out. I typically ride with it locked out because it gives you a little bit more of a stable ride when you're going on flat roads. Now, if we go on some mild dirt trails, I will open it up and then you can get the benefits of that front shock. Otherwise, I turn it off. Disc brakes on this guy again. This is a class three, 750 watts. 
It'll get you upwards of 28 miles an hour throttle only. Uh, I think this one has a color display. You're laughing, but I actually left the key downstairs. <laughs> I'm just going to turn it on and show you the display, but I think you saw it in the video. Um, nice display on this thing. Again, the seven speed Shimano shifter. You got uh, the 180 centimeter disc brakes on it and front and rear lights as well. This actually, this light is uh, pretty bright on this thing. It's pretty nice. So this is a good ride too. Felicia was riding this the other. I was really surprised that she liked this one because it's more of a, a guy's bike. I love it. Yeah, she actually she liked this bike because it's got a cool design on it too. Now, Angui has a whole bunch of different bikes too. They also have some different models of this and there's an upgraded version that has, I think, a little bit more power to it and uh, some other bells and whistles. This one did come with a rear rack and we got a bag on it. It did come with fenders, which actually matched the color nicely. I thought that was pretty cool. Kickstand standard, all this stuff standard comes with these bikes. This one, uh, does this have a horn? I don't know if this one has a horn. One of the other ones had a horn on it. I'll show you that too, but very, very nice package, completely foldable, the handlebars go down. And again, this is a speed demon. So if you're a guy and you want something that's more guyish, this is probably a better design for you if you want something that looks a little bit more like a motocross bike or kind of like a little scooter. But again, if you're a woman, it's not a bad choice for you either. I don't think, I think there's a couple of colors. You might be able to get this in orange and I think it's available in black too. And again, Angui, I'll put the links in the, the uh, chat or the uh, description a little bit later to show you all the different bikes. They're coming out with some exciting new stuff too. And uh, we're probably going to get those to review shortly. So thank you to the folks at Angley for sending this. Again, another one of our favorite bikes. Again, a class three, 750 watt motor. Man, super fast and a lot of fun. This is the one I almost caught air with on the beach. But I couldn't show you the video because Amazon won't let me show a video of riding without a helmet on the beach. And I don't know. It's got a neat little handle on it too. Again, this is probably upwards of 60 pounds. And you can lift it by the helm, the handle like this and carry it around. A lot of people have asked, well, if I fold it, can I roll it? And it's a difficult question to answer. It doesn't roll easily while it's folded. So we actually got that question last week. So if I wanted to take this on a bus or a subway, could I fold it and roll it down the aisle on a bus? And I'm going to say probably not. It's going to be a little too heavy to get up the steps and a little too awkward to get down a narrow aisle. But you can fold it and put it in the back of your car or store it in a closet easily. And that's really what they're intended to do. Back of a car, like a trunk or an SUV. And again, I can get two of these side by side in a 1997 Jeep Wrangler. And that says a lot because there is not a lot of room in the back of a Jeep Wrangler. You know, the newer ones have a lot more room, but the older ones, like the the 90s versions are very, very small, but the fact that I can get two of these comfortably in there is wonderful. So this is a great choice. Well, it is a lot more beast looking than the orange one, right? But a little more difficult. You have to make sure you can get your leg over this bar here, which is probably about, I think it's 20 some inches high. All the specs are on the website too, and we'll include that as well. And again, you can take the battery out of here. Now, this is a little awkward because the key is underneath here and it's kind of obscured by some wires. So this will not run without the key. You have to pop the key in there, turn it to the on position. That lets electricity flow to the motor and all the other parts. So it's right under here somewhere, right about there. And it's kind of awkward. Once you get used to it, it's not bad. You kind of feel it and turn it on. And you can't take the battery out of this thing without the key as well. I was going to show you that too, but I left it downstairs. Pretty cool bike, huh? This is the EP2 Pro, and this still has sand all over it, too. I said, I want to take this to the beach today. Can we go after this show? Oh, yeah. Then we'll go live from the beach. That's pretty cool. All right, the Angui, a definitely good choice for a Class 3. If you need that power, if you want that full 750 watts, the Angui and the WTVAs are the two 750 watts. Now we're going to go show you some 500-watt uh, e-bikes, which are still powerful. They'll get you upwards of... I'd say 20 to 22 miles an hour. They say 20, but I think you can push them, get them a little bit further. So let's take a look at the, let's go to the hay bike first. Let's take a look at that one. This is the hay bike Mars. It's one of the most popular e-bikes on the market today. And for good reason, it's got 500 watts of power in it. It's gonna take you up to 20 some miles per hour with either throttle or pedal assist. 
And the really cool thing about this is it's foldable, so you can take it pretty much everywhere. A lot of spots for maybe you're too far to ride your bike to, you can now throw this in the back of your car or SUV and take it to the beach or take it to the mountains, places you couldn't normally ride because there's expressways or it's just too far from home to take your bike. Now those places are opened up to you without the necessity of putting an expensive bike rack on the back of your car or SUV, which can cause scratches and a whole number of other problems. It's just so much more convenient to be able to fold it up. And it's really easy to do too. All you do is pop this guy open and then uh, now it's got a little weight, it's 60 to 65 pounds. So you fold it like this and the two, the two parts come together. You fold down the handlebar and you're really good to go. And put it together, it's a snap too. You wanna to keep your fingers out of here. It's like the vice grip of death. So don't make that mistake. And to put it back together, you just straighten it out and just snap this guy on, you're good to go comes with this nice little handle too which is really well balanced right about in the center point of the weight of the bike. A couple of features on this thing it has pedal assist there's three ways to ride this thing number one it's a bicycle you can just pedal it it's got a seven gear Shimano shifter on it super high quality state-of-the-art stuff number two you can use pedal assist pedal assist is what helps you go it helps kick in a little bit of that motor to help you pedal a little bit easier. And then there's just throttle, which is the right size. It is a thumb throttle on the right side here. And that will take you up to the full speed that the motor will allow you to. And days like this where it's incredibly windy, I don't know if you can hear me, hopefully you can hear me, but um, when you're riding into the wind, if you've ever ridden a bicycle into the wind, you realize how painful that is to a point where you don't wanna do it. Cause it's just riding into the wind. You've got all this, all this wind pushing you back and it just makes it incredibly hard and you're exhausted and you realize you got to ride back home because usually a bike's a two-way trip you can't just leave it somewhere so uh, this is really going to help on those windy days we're here in florida and we get a lot of windy days down here where the wind's just kicking right now it's about 15 20 miles an hour coming straight into me here on my way home so now i'm kind of tired i took my ride around here did a test ride and I got to ride back home now and I got to ride into this wind and it's just it, it would be painful without pedal assist or the throttle. If you're riding on paved streets and sidewalks and you're pedaling along with it, you're not starting out with the throttle, you're actually pedaling from a dead stop, then you're going to have a lot more range. A lot of people have complained, a lot of uh, women have complained that some of the 26 inches are too big. You can't really get your leg over this, but this one is not bad at all. I can lift my leg right over this center piece here with no problem. You can also tilt it towards you if you need to do that too. It actually comes with a very nice seat and it flips up. I've never seen this design before so you can lift the battery out. It does have a key and the key needs to be in the battery for this thing to have power if you want to use the power. If you're just riding as a bicycle, as a bicycle you really don't need the key but uh, it will need to be in there which is a nice safety feature. They do give you two. They are attached to the battery when you get it from the factory. And uh, if you do lose those keys, you're in trouble because you're not going to be able to turn on the pedal assist and the power of this thing. It does have a horn and a set of lights. You can flick the lights on with this button once it's on. It is a very nice bike and I can see why this thing is so popular. Um, one of the biggest benefits of the Hay bike, uh, this particular one, the Mars model, is it came just about fully assembled. The handlebar was attached, all the wiring's attached. There's really no assembly required on this e-bike, which was phenomenal and a big change from what we're used to. I was really surprised to see that. You just say it came in a box, a big giant box, which I'll show you, and it was folded together, which is what you're supposed to do with these bikes. You fold it so it doesn't take up as much space. It was folded neatly in the, in the box. Um, the battery was here. The fenders are already installed. The lights were installed. Most e-bikes, you have to throw a lot of that stuff on yourself. It's not hard, but it's nice that Hay Bike took the time to figure out how to figure out how to put it in that box fully assembled so you could take it out and pretty much charge the battery and get riding within a couple of hours. Nice, comfortable seat, too. This is a very cushy seat. And what's nice, another benefit of the Hay Bike series is, check this out, the seat. It's a suspension seat post. It doesn't have suspension on the back. Might be hard to do on a foldable bike. This has a seat suspension. It also has the front fork suspension. And the front fork suspension is adjustable. If you don't like the seat post, you can actually replace it if you want to. But this is nice. When I was riding over this bumpy dirt and grass to get to this spot, 
it was actually a pretty comfortable ride. My brains weren't jiggling around in my head. So that is a nice uh, feature with the uh, Hay Bike Mars that came with it itself. Comes with the kickstand that was already installed. Everything was here. Everything was ready to go. All I did was add a bag and add a little phone holder to the front and uh, ready to go. The brakes are adjusted perfectly. It's not making any noises. And I was able to get it up to about, with pedal assist, about 22 miles an hour into the wind, which is pretty amazing for an electric bike. But yeah, this is a winner. I can see why this thing is so popular. It's a very, very nice bike. Let's take a ride, see what she can do. Man, I love B-roll. They give me such a hard time on Amazon with B-roll, but on these other sites, B-roll is like awesome, isn't it? Because you can show things that I can't show here in a studio or in an apartment. So this is the Hay Bike. It doesn't, and people ask me, if I go, Hey Bike, will it come over? No, we haven't got that far to self-driving bikes, but I understand there are some of those on the horizon. They're actually self-balancing bikes. Al was telling me about that. He sent me a link. Big Al in our apartment, he said, there's a link. There's actually a, a bicycle, which is like a Segway. It's self-balancing, a motorcycle. So that's probably coming to bicycles at some point. This is a great, this is a great buy. It's an awesome buy. It comes with everything you see here. It comes with fenders. It's a 500 watt motor. So it's a class two. Now there's going to be some laws coming out probably where you're not going to be able to legally ride class three bikes. How will they know? I don't know. They're probably not going to do an audit, but uh, the difference is 22 miles an hour versus or 20 miles an hour versus 28 miles an hour. So uh, the hay bike fits snugly in that class two that supposedly tops out that you saw in the video. I hit it up 23, but um, 20 miles an hour class two 500 watt e-bike. Uh, nice. It came with a nice seat, too. And I showed you in that video that actually flips up so you can remove the battery. The other one. You have to actually take the seat off, but it's no big deal. And surprisingly, double suspension on this, not in the frame itself. You have the front suspension, which you can lock out and not use on flat roads, which will improve your stability. And it has a seat post with a spring in it. I had some of those. I'm going to talk about that on Amazon, but that's gone uh, away. So this will actually give you that dual suspension for a really smooth ride. It's actually an impressive little a bicycle removable battery just like the uh last well all of these that we're talking about have a removable battery you can charge it on the frame or you could take it off and charge it somewhere else again if you take it to work you charge it inside so that's pretty cool uh the rear rack comes standard too so that's nice real easy this is 99 percent assembled when you get it to i think the only thing i had to pop on was the uh the handlebars or something i forget it was in the video this was a very very easy assembly and i'm thankful for that and it's got the four inch tires, so it's going to get you over grass, going to get you over some light trails and dirt, and it's going to be super stable and comfortable on your flat roads and sidewalks as well. And uh, this is a great bike as well.
I like the, uh, the brakes. It's got the foldable pedals as well. And again, the whole thing folds down. Nice little package. Put two of these in the back of your SUV and head to the beach. Summer's coming, right? Right around the corner here. Well, it's really cold in Florida today. It's kind of weird. <laughs> it's odd. It's got like 50 degrees this morning. We're like, what? April in Florida? Hay Bike Mars. Now, Hay Bike has some other new models out, too. They have some 26-inch models. They have a Cityscape and some affordable models, which are well under, I think, 900 bucks. And you can find most of these on Hay Bike's website. And we'll put the affiliate links down in the comments after this video is done. And also, you can buy these on Amazon. Well, a lot of people feel more comfortable buying things on Amazon because of the return policy. But uh, you're not going to want to return this. This is a great bike. You like the Hay Bike, right? I love the Hay Bike. It's very, very similar in design to the Angui in terms of the frame and the foldability. And uh, again, it's a little bit smaller of a motor. So if you don't need that 750 watt, if you have no intention of going 28 miles an hour, which is probably a good idea for a lot of people, <laughs> then uh, this is a great buy for you. All right, we've got two more bikes to talk about today. Two more foldable electric bikes. Again, thank you if you're tuning in today on Twitter, Twitch, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube. I don't even know. Everywhere except Amazon. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, hopefully Amazon will get their stuff together and figure out what's going on. i got one more bike to show you. It's made by a company called Jason, probably the least expensive bike. Well, the last one will be the least expensive. But check out the features of what you get on the Jason EV7. Make sure I can hit that here. Fresh from Fresh and Felicia, this is the Jason EV7. So many features in this electric foldable bike that I have never seen in a bike at this price level under $1,000. It's got dual suspension. It's got front and rear suspension. This is in the frame itself. We're not talking about seat post. This is actually real suspension on the front and back. So you could take this over bumpy roads and it's just gonna fly through them. Very powerful 500 watt motor. It's gonna get you up to upwards of 20 miles an hour and five levels of pedal assist here. Felicia loves riding this thing and I do too. I'm not gonna lie. It's great for both men and women. It's just a great looking bike as well too we took it out to dinner the other night got a lot of looks a lot of questions people are asking all about this thing super easy to unbox and assemble it comes in the box about 95 percent maybe even more it might be 97 percent assembled all you do is pop on the front wheel very easy put the seat on attach the handlebars all the tools come in the package that's amazing look at this a full color lcd screen i've never seen this in an under $1,000 bike before. This is amazing. So much information. You're gonna get all your pedal assist, pedal assist one through five. The pedal assist means how much power you're gonna to get to help you pedal. If you want it, you can turn it off as well and just pedal. Or you could just open up the throttle and ride it like a motorcycle. It's telling me here the top speed on this bike is 27.3 miles an hour. I'm not sure how they do did that, but uh, I guess it's possible if you pedal your little heart out. I actually managed to get it up to about 22 and a half miles an hour with a lot of pedaling here, but it's just a scream. It's a lot of fun to ride. And this is the game changer here. This is foldable. The entire thing folds in half. So you can actually put two of these in the back of an average SUV and take them to places you could never go to with your bike before. We have some beaches over here that you can't ride your bike to because you can't ride your bike over the causeway. Now we can pop them in the back of our Jeep, head over to the beach and have a beautiful day riding our bikes at the beach. It's amazing. Felicia adores this bike. She had this guy up to a little bit over 20 miles an hour herself. She said it was super stable, super fun to ride, and very easy for her to mount and dismount. It's got a really low step through. She had a 26 inch bike before, it was just a little too high, so the 20 inch tires and the smaller frame seem to be a little bit better for a lot of women. She's about 5'3", and this fits her perfectly. And again, I was riding and I had a big time with this thing. If you're, I tell you what, if you're as tall as Shaq, if you're like seven feet tall, you could probably ride the JCON EB7. Look how high the seat goes. This is that absolute limit of how high it can go. And the handlebars ride too. So that, it's insane. But you could be like 12 feet tall and ride this bike. Uh, riding it through the neighborhood. We've taken it to parks. We've gone to the beach. And it's just a super, super fun, smooth ride with that dual suspension. 
And again, a tremendous amount of features you're not going to find at this price level. We're talking to the adjustable seat and handlebars, the dual disc brakes, very nice, the long range hidden and removable keyed battery. It has a key, a unique key, so you can't steal it. Front and rear shock absorption, the foldable design, and the powerful motor that would get you probably a little bit beyond 20 miles an hour. A lot of incredible features at this price point. It just blew my mind how much JCON was able to give you for less than a thousand bucks. And again, it's a super, super nice bike. A lot of fun to ride. And you can fold it up. Even if you live in a small place or an apartment, you can fold it up and put it in your closet. Great for RVs. Great for people with small SUVs. Great with people who have a bunch of kids or teenagers. It's going to get you where you're going. It's going to get you there fast and with no gasoline and under a thousand bucks. It's an amazing package. Great job, our friends at JCON. JC on here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the EB7 live and in person. It's a little smaller. The wheels, are, I think, are three inch wheels instead of the four inch. Still going to be able to do some off roading with this thing. Still bigger than traditional bicycle wheels. Um, I took this on the beach as well. This is a lot of fun on the beach. It's a little bit lighter again because it has a 500 watt motor instead of a 750. So you save a little bit there. The battery is a little bit smaller. It's in the frame here. It's got the underneath lock a little easier to get to than the uh the angui but uh the same kind of design where the battery is actually located in here and it is removable as well completely foldable this has a lot of interesting adjustments again we show you how high the seat will go on here so you could be incredibly tall and ride this guy and and the nice uh features on this thing front suspension and also this is real frame actually is suspension rear suspension in the frame so you can actually do this off-road and get a much more comfortable ride because you've got rear suspension here. And this is actually your rear shock absorbers. I think this is adjustable too. I don't think I've ever played with that. But this is a really nice bike too, and it's pretty affordable. It does not have fenders, but uh, again, I don't really like fenders on my bike. I don't really ride it in the rain on purpose anyway. It's got a nice display too. Again, 500 watt motor gets you about 20 miles an hour. Uh, same disc brake, same Shimano shifter on here. It's a nice bike. Oh, it's a half twist throttle too. So it doesn't have a thumb throttle, which is nice too. A lot of people prefer that because it feels like a motorcycle, feels and looks like a motorcycle. This is the JCON EV7, a very, very cool contender. And it's a little bit more affordable than some of the other bikes that we looked at today. A great entry level e-bike, again, completely foldable. And uh, throw it in the back of the car and take it with you. Very, very cool bike dig this thing. I was really surprised with the uh, quality of the JC on as well. All right, we've got one more to show you here. And this is my favorite thing to show people because I I'm not going to lie. They mailed this to me. They said, hey, you want to take a look at this bike? I'm yeah, whatever. I didn't really look at the details, but and then I got it and it was in the box. It's I think it's fully assembled. I don't remember. I think, yeah, this was pretty much fully assembled because I mean, look at it. Look how small it is. And I kind of laughed at it when I first got it. I said, all right, I got to do a video. Let me take this out for a ride. And that's where my laughing stopped. Mm -hmm. This bad boy, Felicia was with me. This bad, she was laughing at me too. We took this on a couple of mile ride down to uh, a little construction area we usually do our test rides on. And this baby hit 15 and a half miles an hour consistently fast. And it actually was a nice ride because the seat has a suspension post, a spring suspension post. And you can put it up just about as high as you want. I think it'd go a little bit higher than this. But um, it's actually a, a contender. And what's nice about this, you put the seat down, you fold this guy down, and you can, I have this in the back seat of my Jeep. This little tiny guy had it in the back seat of my, because look how little it is. It's going to be, oops, a little bit easier to, sure I didn't lose my cable here. Okay. Um, lift up too, because it's going to be a lot lighter because the battery's smaller and motor smaller. Look at that. And this is available on Amazon well. It's called the DYUS2. I'll put the links out there as well. Top speed about 15 and a half miles an hour, dual disc brakes. And it has a pretty bright headlight too. Let me see if I can turn that on for you. Check that out. The thing is actually the nicest headlight out of all of them. And listen to the horn. It's incredibly loud, right? And you hit the throttle. Now you can pedal. You can't really pedal because the gear is so low on this. Am I still have, do I still have sound? Okay, yeah, I thought I pulled my thing up. Um, but uh, you can't really pedal. I mean, the pedals are foldable and you can pedal. It's just such a low gear that you really can't go anywhere. But this thing will fly. Look at this. 
15 miles an hour as fast as you want to go, right? Now, 15 miles an hour is plenty enough for most people. A lot of people don't want to go that fast. They're scared to go that fast. So if you just want a little bike that you can carry on a train or a bus, you could probably lift this up and put this on a bus because it's not that heavy. I think it's 30 some pounds. I'll put the link to the description with the full stuff on here, but this is really everything you need. Technically, this is a, a throttle only. I think it's a class two <laughs> because uh, there is no pedal assist. It's throttle or um, pedal. Then you can't really pedal it. So it's just kind of throttle. It's like a full hand throttle. But I'll tell you what, this is a lot of fun to ride and it's surprisingly reliable. You're probably going to get, I don't know, 20, 30 miles on a full charge. Not a big battery. You can't remove this battery. It's kind of locked in the frame. Actually, let me turn that on. Look at the back. I don't think I ever looked at the back light. Oh, look at that. It's like Night Rider. See that light? That's pretty cool, isn't it? I'm digging that. That's so loud. Dog hates it. But uh, yeah, pick this guy up, throw it in the back seat of your car. You probably throw this in your luggage and take it on a cruise. It's that small and that light. No, don't do that. You can't take it on a cruise. I'm just kidding about that. But look at this thing, the DYU S2. They do have some new models of this thing, which actually connect via Bluetooth to an app, which will give you your uh, speedometer and your odometer, all those readings on your phone, which is really nice. So take a look at that too. It's a few extra bucks. I think this is under 500 bucks and I think it's on sale on Amazon as well. But this is a very interesting bike. If you just want something to goof around on and you just want to go to your friend's house, ride around the neighborhood at 15 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour is respectable. That is actually pretty fast. You'll be able to keep up with anybody who's pedaling. Not many people pedal faster than 15 miles an hour at a continuous pace. So this is an interesting bike. And again, I laughed when I first saw it. I ain't laughing no more. This is a nice bike. I'm digging this thing. Kickstand, everything here has even got fenders. I think the only thing I had to put on were the fenders and uh, maybe... I think that was it. Oh, the pedals and the fender. I think that was all. It's really easy to install. So even if you have no mechanical ability whatsoever, you're going to be able to get riding on that DYU S2. It's nice. Again, I'm going to come back and pop all these links in here so you can look up all the information, all the specs. Somebody asked us what the price of the hay bike is in rupees. I don't know, but I'll give you the website, which does have a converter on the website. And you'll be able to tell how much it is in just about any currency that you want to spend. I think they have creative financing on most of these two. We can pay them over time. If you can't afford to pay it all in one chunk, like a lot of us can't, um, you can pay them over time. They have a lot of interesting financing options and shipping options as well. All right. I got another live I need to get to. I got to prep for my one o'clock, but I thank you all for hanging with us. I apologize. We weren't on Amazon. For those of us looking for us on Amazon, there's some kind of hang up going on there. We heard about it earlier in the week. Apparently it's still going on. Uh, we'll try to do the show on Amazon again in the near future, but uh, you'll be able to find it on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, everywhere else. And uh, if you have any questions afterwards, once this thing posts to YouTube and social medias, I'll check all of those later today after my second stream. We'll, put, we'll try to address those questions and answer those as best we can. If I don't know the answer, I'll go out and look it up for you. And I've got a lot of resources to help me answer questions that I don't know how to answer as well. So thank you for joining us. My name is Fresh Reflect Flesh. For Flesh and Felicia, we're out. We'll see you guys later on. Bye, Felicia. <laughs>